Mr. Sameer Kocha, Mr. Ramadurai, the legend Dina Mehta ji, Professor Patak, <coughs> the CEO of the BSE, Ashish Chauhan ji, Sri Dhanjal, the absent Mr. Rana, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to this, uh, to the release of the book and to use this as an excuse to see the legendary stock exchange, which we've heard about, but I've never had the privilege of seeing. The theme of the summit is making India a $20 trillion economy. And with a new government in, and a government which everybody is very hopeful about, this is a timely aspiration. A nation can only grow as big as its people's dreams. Today, our dreams are big, but dreams need to encompass the unknown. Today, because it's a different kind of audience, it's an audience that makes or breaks companies by lending, by investing. I'm going to actually, I'm actually I'm constitutionally incapable of reading a speech. So I'm just going to give you a few ideas that I um, have on how we could achieve, say, $20 trillion. It can't be just upscaling what we already have. It has to take a leap into the unknown. Now, since Mr. Ramadurai is here, I'm going to tell you the background to this. I invented a scheme in my ministry called STEP. STEP was about, or is about, I will give money to any NGO that trains 200 women at a time and gets them employment. Now, we advertised this scheme. We got 4,300 responses. Um, of which 4,200 were about teaching women, tailoring, stitching, and embroidery. It was so annoying, it was so annoying that in, in this huge country, all we could think of is just more stitching, more tailoring, more embroidery for women. There wasn't a single idea in the entire bunch that we got, so I stopped the scheme. Now, I was just thought I'd share a few of my thoughts with you. If you want to scale, and if you want to make everybody a part of this upliftment, you have to look at different areas. One would be food. At the moment, we are, in, we are importing dal. We are importing a lot of food. We, are we going to keep doing that? Or are we going to look at new paradigms of creating food? We, for instance, one of the things Mr. Kocha has talked about, and which is very close to my heart, is going organic. But can we go organic in the ether? Can we go organic without anything behind it? Sikkim has shown us the way. Sikkim first passed an act, saying, so they laid the rule basis, saying that nobody will, will put fertilizer and pesticide. That was an actual law. After which they started training. Every farmer, First, they trained 800 young boys, oh, boys and girls, to be teachers. After which, they put them into every school. And every farmer and every young person had to study for three hours a day, twice a week, on how to turn their fields organic or their dreams organic. Today, just within three years, Sikkim is completely organic. Its products, its produce is worth, uh, are worth more than anything else we grow in India. They have a huge export market. Why, if we are going to go organic, it has to be using education. It has to be using investment. We can't treat organic as a luxury, something that you eat once a week on Sundays, or something that nature's uh, harvest will sell, or niche stores will take uh, a leap. It has to be absolutely uh, the basis of what we grow. Um, this will save us one and a half lakh crores of import a year in just urea alone. It will save us from famine which is upon us. For instance, to give you one small example, not small, it's a huge example. We have imported something, or we are using, since nine, 2003, we're using something called nicotinoid pesticides. These pesticides were invented by Bayer, subsequently by another company. They came into India and all over the world, and now it's one-fourth 
of all the pesticides we use are neonicotinoid. We especially use them for growing cotton. The same Bt cotton, which said that we are going to be um, the next generation because we won't need pesticides, now uses more pesticide than anything else in the world. Now, this neonicotinoid pesticide, and you're most welcome to look at them, has now, they've now discovered within six years that was, has wiped out the entire bee stock of the world. 75% of bees, who are your only pollinators for most uh, crops, have disappeared. And it's been linked specifically to neonicotinoids. Now, England has put them under investigation because they found that Bayer and the other companies had lied while getting clearances. Europe has banned it for two years. America has put it under investigation. India won't touch the ban or even investigate because we need them for growing cotton. But do we need Bt cotton? Do we need cotton that is so expensive? Because if we lose the bees, which we are losing rapidly, we won't have any pollinators in India. So should we look at pollination as a food necessity? Or should we look at pesticides? These are the questions that will come up every day for organic food. And no organic food can be created unless the BSC unless you people decide that India will be organic. It's not government. The second way of uh, growing food is to look at complete alternatives. The same way as now we cannot imagine a world without computers. There is another revolution coming up. And it is coming up in America, the country that invented Silicon Valley and, and changed the way we are. And that is alternative foods. Food that are produced in petri dishes rather than using huge amounts of land. We, as in, we are never going to not eat meat. In fact, India is now eating more meat than Europe, just India alone. So what do we do? If you use one cow, uses 11, or one cow, one goat, takes 11 kilos of grain and green to produce one kilo of meat. It's the most inefficient conversion of energy ever. So what have they started doing? Instead of putting bans and saying, go vegetarian, go this, go that, which is wonderful, but impractical, they, in Silicon Valley, groups of people have now started inventing meat created from cells. Just the same meat, but without using animals that uh, need land, need food, need feeding. And last year, the first hamburger was created by Mark Post of um, the University of Utrecht. But there are companies now which are doing alternative milk. The real milk, but created in labs. Real meat created in labs. Isha Datar runs a company called New Horizons from Washington. Who are her main investors? Google, Microsoft, that amazing company from Hong Kong which is invested in every single startup which has done well. All these people who envisioned a new world with computers are the ones that are now investing hugely into food that is created using the same elements, just multiplying cells. If we can clone plants, we can clone cells. This will be the food of the very near future. By the end of this year, there will be milk on, in all over America called Moo Free, invented by two Indians who got their degrees in Tamil Nadu in, in biotechnology and have, are working at this company called Moo Free. So this is another uh, startup that you should be looking at. The third would be monetizing gobar. In 1960, when Pandit Nehru decided that India needed fertilizers and pesticides, within one year, within one year, every village, which till today in 2015 doesn't have a school, has a, had a shop selling urea and pesticides. And a huge blitz telling people why they needed to use it for the Green Revolution. Now we know the Green Revolution has got lots of terrible, terrible things in its wake. It has brought in diseases that are household names now, like cancer. 
it's actually not increased the food uh, beyond a point, but made the land completely hungry for water, water which we don't have. So should we now not monetize gobar? Do startups, which now in every village, they use, have shops that sell organic fertilizer, organic pesticides. That would be another area which we have to go into sooner or later. Either we do it today, kushi kushi, or we do it after the 10 millionth farmer has committed suicide. But either which way, we've got to do it. Now, in Nagpur, there are eight villages that have formed a cooperative. And they simply do, a young boy, 20 years old, they came across an interesting idea, which is what the $10 trillion dream is going to con consist of. And they buy urine, cow urine from the whole village every day for one rupee. And they keep it for a day, and then when it's what they call matured, two days later, they sell it for two rupees. And the farmers buy it. In these eight villages, the, uh, the crop has gone up by 18%. This is recorded, studied by government industries. Now, if we can do that, you don't have to import at some point. Um, if we can just push up the crop, reduce the monies that they have to take from, from the market for buying, goba, uh, for buying pesticides and fertilizer, and yet push up the um, produce, then you will have to use what you normally have, which is in indigenous um, fertilizer and indigenous pesticide. The second is water. We are in the middle of a water crisis. What is the difference between rich and poor? The rich drink this water, and the poor drink from taps which may or may not exist. We, the only difference between rich and poor now is water. And it's going, that difference is going to become less and less as we ourselves starve the water. Do you think that we can carry on using this? This comes from a stream in the Himalayas. It comes from drilling holes in the mountains and pulling up water from Himachal. Himachal is effectively feeding the rest of India water. Can Himachal do this for very long? No, because they themselves are reaching a point where their streams are drying up and they are water starved. Coca-Cola takes its water from deep drilling in Rajasthan. Do the, does Rajasthan have enough water to feed its own people? No. The lack of water destroys people. In Hyderabad, 16 million liters of water are given to Al Kabi to wash cow carcasses, buffalo carcasses. And the women of Hyderabad line up from two to three every morning, plastic buckets on head to just pick up water from, because it's only available between two and three in the morning from the municipal tap. Can we ask those women to be, to produce something for India after that when they haven't slept one night properly? So the la water will have to be next on our agenda, not only how we save it, but how we create it. Can you turn water vapor into water? Can we do it through condensation? Yes, we can. There is a, a uh, there is a technician and an inventor in Tamil Nadu who was taken to Ethiopia and there he created water for the Ethiopians simply showing them how you decentralize water management, the creation of water and how every village could just use gharas or large tanks to turn water vapor into water. I introduced him to Gujarat. Um, you know, he tried to do it, but again, bureaucracy was not terribly welcoming to a new idea. The, um, can you turn salt water into water? Of course we know we can. We have the technology. Do we use it? Everything has to be decentralized for us to, to get water, to get food put down. Instead of having a pole line, pole line service, we have to look at each village and do a DPR for each village. What does it need to be uh, self-sufficient in food, water, energy? Energy. There is a book which I must, must insist 
that you read, even if you read no other book in the world, including the history of the BSE. Um, hello, Mr. Rana. Um, you uh, must read Gunter Pauli's Blue Planet. It's about how one man took an area in Colombia, and now he's gone to Johannesburg, and he's done different things, new inventions, small inventions, but which push up the economy by m millions of dollars, just millions. What has he done? He, for instance, has invented, there are 800 people who work with him, and all they do is invent amazing things. For instance, they run their cars on top and time, and they run without changing the, the uh, basic, you know, how the machinery of the car, but they run on top and time. Where do they get the top and time? They grow pine trees. The pine trees deliver resin. Resin is filtered into top and time, and they run them. Why don't we grow? We don't have any trees left, but we could have resinous trees. They um, have now gone to Johannesburg and invented, they found that Johannesburg spent most of his money making bread or eating bread. So they've invented solar bakeries and the same solar bakeries with new kinds of solar because they've invented a, a solar, um, what do you call it, battery that works at five times the normal solar battery just from adding water. They have, it uses, it's used to power street lights as well from the bakeries. The most amazing invention that he's done, which China has bought, is inventing paper from granite and stone dust. And he was selling books made from that paper, which were amazing. China, buying this invention, has already put it into use and expects to save 270 million trees this year simply from using his invention. Why can't we do the same? He is giving it free. We have to look at new ways of housing. How long can we arrest people for stealing sand? How long can you just keep aspiring towards cement-built houses that don't even last one monsoon? You may have the houses that you have in the city, but I'm talking about six lakh villages need new ways to build houses. Adobe is a good idea. Dr. Ashok Khosla has been trying to build adobe houses for the last and 50 years without much success because he has no banking background. He has no startup money. But if we were to invest in Adobe Bricks, we would be able to get to the next level of Adobe and everybody could make their houses with the mud that they actually have under their feet instead of importing uh, cement, instead of stealing sand, instead of picking up things that we don't need from other places. Look at clothes, as I said, it's not BT cotton which needs it, but you need to have more um, intensive work into new fibers. Look at today's India, uh, Indian Express. It's got a story of a man who is not terribly educated, but has turned, done the most amazing thing. He's taken the stubble that we burn. Every day our fields are on fire especially with rice paddy. Um, I have made it illegal in my constituency, but it doesn't work. Even making it illegal, they will still burn it. And the smaller the farmer, the more he will burn. And when he burns his field, it is weaker for the next time, and weaker for the next time, and needs more water. And so the cycle becomes worse and worse and worse. There's no 20 trillion um, future for us if we can't stop that. So what has this man done? He has found a way to turn stubble into cardboard. So he earns 40,000 rupees an acre just simply selling the cardboard, which he pays to farmers who give him their stubble. So he's monetized an unmonetizable product. That's where we need to think. We need to invest in this man. We need to look at health. If we're not well, what can we do? And one of the reasons we're not well is because we take so many antibiotics. But if you actually look at a solution for antibiotics, we're getting it through our meat, mainly through chicken. How do you sort out 70% anti of antibiotics in India being given to chickens? Why do they give them? Because chickens are given this much place in battery cages to stand. 
So they fight with each other. So to prevent fighting with each other, as soon as they're born, chicken, uh, chicken uh, breeders cut their mouths. They cut their beaks off, they cut their toes off. And because they're tiny at that point, they do it without anesthesia, so the chicken remains sick. And to prevent more sickness through the bad food they give, through the cramping of this teeny weeny bird, they have to keep it alive for a minimum of four to six months so that you get a big fat chicken. They give it hormones. And because hormones make it even sicker, they give it antibiotics. But were we to give this chicken more space to live, your antibiotics would disappear. So you have to look at solutions which don't even cost money, but they're so radical that they change the way we live. You need, for instance, and you need, for instance, to, if I were to say do one thing that saves India, it would not be anything else except plant forests, plant forests, plant forests, plant forests, plant forests, forest, forest, nothing else. If you do that, sounds so strange, but your forests give you food, your forests give you employment, your forests will stabilize the weather. We are not going to have any food if we don't, don't stabilize the weather. Today we are in the middle of a major crisis because it rained and the hail came all over North India. It destroyed the wheat crop. How much does it cost the government of India? Thousands of crores in simple compensation. In my own constituency, the amount of money that we have given in compensation goes to over 50 crore rupees. Can we afford it? Why not just stabilize the weather instead? And it could be done so easily. It could be done by looking at cloning, which, which Andhra Pradesh started and then abandoned for some reason in the 80s. It could be done through people doing startups on just forests. You and I, rich people and poor people, use seven trees a year. With the rich, use it for furniture, for paper, for rayon, for packaging. The poor use it to burn, to create carts. You, if we were to plant back just the trees we use, you would get your energy from there, you would get weather stabilization, you'd get everything. I was in Burma two years ago, and my interpreter was a young boy called Win. Both his parents had died of bone cancer, strangely enough. And in both cases, he said there, were, there was so much pain that could have been involved, but they found a really common vine that grows there. And he fed them a couple of leaves every day, and till they died, there wasn't a titch button of pain. I asked him to send me the vine, and he did. It's the, one of the most common vines we use in India. We just simply haven't thought of it. So we need, again, to put startups into, instead of looking down on, say, Ayurveda, or changing it into some kind of quack medicine, we need to actually put our money, or you need to put your money, into startups that involve medicines that are so easily available to us, and which would arise by themselves. I, my mother had hepatitis, and a friend of mine wrote to me and said, I'm sending you some herbs which cured me of hepatitis A. So she sent them, and when I looked at them, they were in my garden, they were in my garden as jungly weeds that we were uprooting every day. Again, we need more education on this. There is not a single course in India that teaches you proper horticulture, that teaches you about plants. We need to change an education system. We need to put money into changing systems or introducing new things that would um, teach us to reach the two trillion mark. I will give you just two more things that we could change India. One of the things that has been invented, when I went for the elections, I asked one of my great heroes, Professor Anil Gupta of IIM, um, who is an inventor, and who has invented more things to save India than anybody could, but lacks money. Who the president recognizes and gives awards for best inventions every year. I asked him to make me a machine to make gober logs. When I came back, within a month, he had done it. It's a small machine with a long thing like this. You just put gober into it, squeeze it, so that the moisture comes out, dry it so it becomes adobe. What are we using it for? Every day, 
over a lakh of people die in India. I mean, a lakh is, is an understatement, but a minimum of a lakh. Every day, more or less, we burn them. It takes 600 kilos of wood to burn one person. And now we are, because we have run out of shrub, we are now using mango wood. We are using all sorts of wood. It costs more than 10,000 to burn somebody. It is also destroying our forests more than even so-called development. So what do we do? Now we use gober, if you use gober logs with samagri in it, it is as sacred people will do it. How did we start? My gaushala in Delhi, my animal shelter, which also has cows in it, we didn't know what to do with that gober nuisance. Every day we were paying people to take it away. Now we have a contract for Nigambod Ghat, which takes it for four rupees a kilo. I am earning 60,000 rupees a month just selling gober logs. If one were to put their money and start a gober log, just give it to every village, they, uh, they would stop going to the jungle and cutting 10 trees every day to burn whoever has died. Can, otherwise, you can't stop it. You're losing more forests by the minute, and you're losing your crops, your weather, your life, your water, because somebody's died. So should we put it into companies like this? This, what we need in India, is not just a ministry for skill development. And I speak to Mr. Ramadurai on this. I, we need a ministry for invention. We need to pay for people to send you inventions. Look at the inventions that 800 patents just Anil Gupta has got. What kind of inventions? Right from if you sleep at your table in an office, the computer stops working. Uh, if you uh, don't sit up straight, in, right from a washing machine that in a village you can pedal, pedal with, to this gober machine, he has invented uh, bricks that you can make again out of gober using a little bit of thatch in it. Um, he has invented a cycle that is used in Bihar during the floods. It actually rows, it develops oars, which can be tucked in without increasing the weight. He has developed a um, crutch. A simple thing, a crutch which allows you, which goes up and down, and which allows a disabled person to climb stairs without swinging it out and being terribly uncomfortable and, and, and feeling embarrassed. It's a simple little device. And he has 800 of these. And we need to incorporate inventions. You need to have a website. And you need to actually invest in them. You need to start thinking laterally. What is it that is going to save India? What, 20, what is going to take us to the $20 trillion mark? We can do it, but we need to think completely fresh. Every decade, as Dina Mehta said, every decade takes us somewhere else. And we cannot keep repeating in terms of scale simply, OK, so we did, I earned 800 rupees, so now I'm going to earn 1,000 rupees and live happily ever after. Not at all. You need to spread out laterally. And for that, a ministry of invention and an inventive audience, an inventive bankers, inventive uh, investors is what we need if we're going to make the grade. Thank you.